Good morning. It's Wednesday. Let's see here. There we go. Yes, got my Cabela's hoodie on. I refuse to turn the furnace on today, but it's like 64 degrees in our house. <laughs> It's a little chilly on the outside today. 40 something, I think, what it said. So, at least that's what somebody told me. But, good morning, Miss Joyce. Glad you're on here. And, uh, I should get set down earlier and get all my pages turned before I get on here, right? But, anyway, glad you guys are on here sharing. I wonder, how's the weather out there in the Salt Lake area? It's uh, pretty chilly here this morning. So, anyway, put my hands in my pockets because I may have to give in, turn some heat on at some point. <laughs> uh, it is chilly. <clears throat> so, I saw, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, you know, this huge spending bill, whatever they're wanting to spend, gazillions of dollars, and um, the the uh, the Muslims that have been elected into free America, which still boggles my mind. I mean, the the those characters that are in there, they, those women don't want any kind of freedoms at all. They, they want everything to be like the... Uh, third world countries because that's what uh, the Muslim religion will lead to. It will bring us down to a third world country and people can say what they want, but it's a devilish religion and uh, uh, it, wasn't, it won't be blessed in any way. It's violent, it's vicious and, and it's satanic and, and uh, it will just destroy America and these women are all mad and they have threatened Pelosi because Pelosi's got to get every vote she can to get this uh, immoral p bill passed. And so they said, if you give any money to Israel to help with their uh, Iron Dome, that uh, we're not going to vote for it. So good old Nancy, being the nice gal that she is, pulls that out of the spending bill uh, to help Israel. And uh, <clears throat> just another mark against America as we uh, continue to go down uh, the the uh, path of uh, communism and, and maybe even Sharia law one of these days, uh, if we listen to these crazy women. So, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, the immigration continues to go crazy and, and I'm, I'm, hey, I'm not against people wanting to come to America. I think it's great. But you let them come in illegally and you, you let all this trash come that, that comes with it and uh, we'll be a third world country one of these days. So, and uh, then we'll be uh, wishing that we'd have had some walls. So, <clears throat> but, so all is good. It's not a, it's not a three dog day anymore. Uh, Maggie went home yesterday, Tyler's back. So I'm not having to watch Maggie and Teresa's here today, and so, and both of the dogs are actually right here under the table with me. They've been fighting all morning, so it's a good morning, and uh, glad you're on here. And and uh, uh, you know, we we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for leaders that will be uh, honest and godly, and and. Uh, you know, we in uh, doesn't matter whether they are or not. Doesn't give us any reason not to be ourselves, right? So let's be honorable. Let's be godly and honest in our walk, right? So um, I, I was, you know, I was, I was thinking too that they Jan, they're doing great. So they're much hundred, you know, doing a whole lot better. Thanks for that. So. Um, you know, I was thinking too, you know, pray for our community. Uh, Friday, uh, I, I know Friday we have a um, uh, couple of big funerals in the area. I'm, I'm not doing either one. And uh, which, 
you know, happy to, uh, I shouldn't say happy, but uh, always uh, will take the opportunity to help a family if I'm ever asked. But I just, I, I know one of them is in Fort Morgan on Friday, one's here in, in Brush. Uh, the Greg Gatto's mom, uh, Cheryl Gatto, is here in Brush on Friday, and then uh, Austin and Johnston, uh, 31 years old, they having that funeral uh, Friday in Fort Morgan. And, you know, we just have lost a lot of people, seems like. And, and then, you know, dealing with um, uh, my cousin Tanya, her, her dad uh, passed away back in Missouri. I'm not sure when that funeral is going to be, but uh, he'll be greatly missed too. So, <clears throat> but, you know, we just need to pray for our, not only our, our country, but pray for our community. And uh, God, God really does want to wake people up and, and get them to turn to him and find their hope and confidence in him. And so let's get out there and let's tell others and don't hide out, but uh, get out there and tell others about Jesus and, and be brave about doing it. So um need to get into the scripture, just go down through my little list of things that I wrote in my journal. I, I usually start out in uh, Proverbs and then with Chapel's devotion and then whatever Spurgeon has. And then I come back to uh, Proverbs usually again. And uh, uh, Proverbs is very good for everyday living. And uh, uh, we, we need to use it and, and uh, apply these things to our lives. And it says in Proverbs twenty two fifteen, I know the context dealing with children. It says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And so there, uh, corporal punishment is okay. And uh, it's actually biblical that we spank our children and doesn't matter what the society says and blah, blah, you know, it, it um, we're not in this to abuse a child, but we are to, to spank them. And, and, it, and it's a, and it's a rod of correction to, to correct behavior, right? I mean, we need to correct that. Kids need to know that there's places you don't, you, you know, there's just a place in life. You don't cross that line. And, but I was reading that and giving thought to myself, and I'm a child of God's, and sometimes I still need that rod of correction, and I need to, I need to realize and and or remember. I do realize, but I think I need to remember that old sin nature that I have likes to raise itself up every day, and I need to do battle with that. I need to. Uh, when when you start feeling yourself being taken or carried away by your flesh, you, you know, you need to stop. Stop where you're at and get back to walking in the spirit and not controlled by that sin nature. And uh, we'll, we'll fight that until the day we die, but we need to fight it. And there's no reason to uh, not have some kind of self-control or temperance, as the Bible calls it, that we need to have in our lives and, and we need to have that self-control. And, um, and I just praise the Lord that at times God does correct and, uh, remind me uh, of, uh, 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 of those things. And, and then since I'm here, I read a, uh, just over in the next chapter in chapter 23, verse 26, this is, uh, and it's still talking about kids in this passage, but, um, it, it says in verse 26, it says, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. And, you know, we, we need to correct our kids, but, but we also, our kids, as it says here, my son, give me thine heart. You know, our, our kids ought to know and trust and realize that, that they can trust us. Yes, we can, we'll make mistakes along the way, but they always need to know that we love them no matter what. And, and that we will do our best to give them biblical advice and biblical counsel. And uh, I, I just wrote in my journal, I said, Lord, help me, uh, keep, uh, help me to, to never break the trust my kids have with me. And, uh, 
you know, I, I see that happen a lot. I see parents that I think one of the biggest things is is that when when a couple gets divorced and they have those those kids that uh, it, it just wrecks everything. You know, it, it seems to bring you to a point where, you know, those kids are, are wrecked and devastated because of that. And people can say what they want. Oh, they, they bounce back, but they don't recover nearly like everybody thinks, wants to say that they do. And, and I, I think it breaks a, a, a trust that, that is godly, that's biblical and not just divorce, but I'm just, in in everything, I mean, we we need to make sure that that we're always trying to be biblical and honorable in what we tell our kids, and uh, not break that trust. That because our kids grow up, and when they're little, they give their hearts to us, or they should. I mean, unless you're just gone all the time, or never around, or always putting your kids down. But I don't think you guys that are on here are like that at all, and. I don't know. I, I just, I, I just, uh, I read that and I thought, you know what, Lord, help me to never break that trust that my kids have with me and uh, <clears throat> make sure that I walk in a way that's honorable and uh, pleasing to him. And then I, I, I preached this on Sunday because I read it in my devotions just a while back. <clears throat> but then I find it interesting that uh, Spurgeon brought this up this morning uh, in my devotion, and it's Psalm 61 and verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I, I mean, that's, that's what, what a wonderful promise that God has given us in his word that we can always go to that rock that is higher than we are. And, and, uh, what, what a blessing that is. <clears throat> and uh, anytime our heart is overwhelmed, we need to go to the rock that is higher than I and, and higher than you. And, and um, that's just a powerful statement that, that David wrote and, and such a reminder for us uh, to, to do that. And then I read further in Psalm 66 today, my daily reminder. It's just like God seems to just give me this one over and over and over about things that are going on in the world. And, and it's good for all of us to remember this, that uh, God's in charge and, and God's got things, what, whatever is causing us stress today, <clears throat> and it'll be different things for all of us, but there'll be things that come up that, that try to distract us or, or cause us to, you know, go into some kind of deep thought or anxiety or worry or, depression or whatever it is that however your reaction is, everybody's different, but God just continues to remind us that we need to give all that to him and trust him and, and he, he will take care of us. And, and we need to rejoice in that and, and be thankful for that. You know, so often I think we walk around and we're, you know, um, I know we deal with all kinds of things, but we have God on our side. And do we believe that? Do we really truly trust that? Do we uh, uh, rest and rely on his power to, to deliver us from those things? I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, he just constantly reminds us and, and we ought to rejoice in that. And it says in Psalm 66, make a joyful noise unto, unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. And that word terrible has the idea of being awesome and astounding, right? And so say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Uh, uh, through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Uh, you know, there, there's coming a day. These guys can bang their chest all they want and talk about how powerful they are. And one day they're, they're going to be made uh, to bow and, and, uh, uh, and all the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice 
in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. And, and I mean, it just goes on and on. And, and how grateful we ought to be for that in, in knowing and understanding that God's got this and, and we need to just remember that. And, and uh, he says this in verse 12, he says, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. And whatever comes, it's, it, it's okay. And whatever today is that you're facing, face it with the Lord on your side and, and uh, remember that and, and trust that. And he, he just, I don't know, he just continues to give us such wonderful promises in his word and, and how, how we need to, to trust him and, and know that, look, he's the one, all right? He's the one that, that we need to uh, look to and, and, uh, and just quit thinking that you can do this on your own. That's just pride. When, when we think that we got this and that we can do it without him, that's just pride. And, and we need to get rid of pride. Pride will always destroy. I, I read in Isaiah, it's talking about Hezekiah again. And, and it says that, that Hezekiah let, um, uh, uh, the uh, king of Babylon come in after God had extended his life for 15 years. He he allowed the king of Babylon to come in and he showed him everything uh, in in uh, in uh, the house and in his house and in the temple and showed him all the wealth that they had and and he did so out of pride and and Isaiah came to him and, and said, what, what is it that you've shown him? And Hezekiah said, well, I showed him everything. And then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the words of the Lord of hosts, behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And, <clears throat> you, you know, pride will always destroy and and it's wicked and and it 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 uh it it destroys whatever good that we have and and it destroys us it destroys our families when when we act in pride and i just wrote in my own devotions this morning pride destroys kill it in my life just kill it don't don't let don't let pride be a part of your life and and i know it's difficult but we must kill that pride and and we need to keep that out of our lives. I you just see it. I look. I've seen ministries uh, crater because of pride and, and arrogancy in a pulpit. I've seen I've seen families destroyed because of pride, whether it be the husband or the wife or both. And and uh, just it, pride destroys. And get rid of it. You don't. Pride is not good. And. Pride makes us run our mouths so often that, you know, that's what I catch. I, I catch myself. That's how I know that I'm reacting in pride is when I'm running my mouth when I shouldn't be or letting my thoughts take over and, you, you know, and ugh, just pride destroys and we need to kill it in our lives. And, but then he goes on and what a, what a promise he gives us uh, here, here in Isaiah 40. He says in verse six, the boy said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. <clears throat> I mean, what? The, this is our God. This is... Uh, and and his word is here forever, and and let's stand on that, and and let's let's apply what what his word says, and and don't ignore it, but but truly uh, trust in him. And then he goes on in a powerful ending to chapter forty. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. 
Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the, the, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. <clears throat> they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I mean, what a what a powerful promise that he gives uh, uh, here in his word, and and know that that it, it never fails, and and God's word never fades, and God's word never falters. But God's word is real, and and we need to to trust that and live according to that. And then, quickly, just last thing that I'm reminded of, I started reading the book of Ephesians this morning, and. Uh, probably uh, my favorite book of the Bible is Ephesians, and I I, I love Ephesians, and uh, and I just read uh, uh, chapter one this morning, and and in verse three it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ." You know, and we're we're going through Colossians three on Wednesday nights now, and 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 there it tells us that we need to set our affection on high, and here it tells us that not only should our thoughts and our affections and our desires be on on that which is eternal, but we need to understand that God blesses us with eternal blessings, and there is nothing here that can measure to to what God is doing. And, and giving us, when, when we're serving him and walking with him and living for him, God is blessing us with heavenly blessings, eternal blessings. We, and the thing is, is we may not see all of them now, but there will come a day when we will see all of those. And, you know, it, it's even like the, uh, uh, those that helped with Quam last night. You know, I praise the Lord for that. Seventy some kids were, were there last night and, um, you, you might think that you're spinning your wheels, but you're not. Do you, do you realize that, you know, every year 70 some kids come out? Well, you know, I mean, we're not reaching all of them, but hey, that's 70 some kids that have an opportunity to realize there's something much better and they trust Christ as their savior and, and God uses them greatly through their lives and, and see them one day, uh, in heaven, uh, because, somebody loved them enough to tell them about Jesus. And, and we may not see any of that till we get to heaven, but that's all right. That's okay. But uh, he, he just blesses us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And you can't be touched by anything this world has. And so don't fall in love with what the world's doing. It's just a mess. Um, and, and everything here is going to be corrupt and, and disintegrate, but the things that God gives us are not, and they are eternal and they are a blessing from God and never forget that. And this is from God almighty, God eternal, our creator who, who gives us those things. So anyway, that's all I have today. I showed you this the other day. You like my new Bible? I love the green. You guys like the green? I love this. So this is my devotion Bible now. So, but make sure you carry the sword with you wherever you go and use it mightily. So, all right. <clears throat> well, you guys have a great day. It's Wednesday. If you can be here, we have prayer meeting tonight, seven o'clock. We take requests. We pray. We uh, do a short Bible study, whatever time we have left up until eight o'clock. We get you out of there pretty close on time every week. And uh, uh, that way, you, you, if you got kids and stuff, you know, we have teens meeting on Wednesday night. We have little guys have their own class on Wednesday night, too. So it's just a good night, and uh, it's a good time to come and pray with each other. Uh, prayer is the most powerful thing that we can do as believers, and so let's come together and let's pray for each other. And guys, everybody here, you have a great day today, and uh, Lord bless you.